Ladies and gentlemen, Stephanie Neal versus Paul Thank you. Thank you for being here today. I normally speak off the top of my head, very expertly, and but because I truly wanted to say every word, I'm not going to approach the subject in this manner today. It's going to be, well, it is. So, let's go. I titled this uh, The First Elder's Address, and I stole this idea from Ed Hubbard. Because when he did it, I really enjoyed reading his perceptions and his goals. Um, what he wanted to bring to the tradition, and he truly did bring everything that he said that he was going to bring. Uh, while he was the first elder of this tradition. <clears throat> and as the first elder, I am reminded of the shoulders I stand upon. The firm foundation that was created by all the first priestesses and first priests of this lovely tradition. Just look at Chancer. Lord Lewis. He has poured his entire life upon this tradition, working relentlessly almost every day without complaining and for most have no idea, within this tradition, have no idea the work that goes into this on a daily basis. Chancellor Don Lewis will always be known as one of the giants of this tradition, giving everything and giving, it, selling homes, everything that he has and had, he's given willingly. Arch Priestess Newman High Corral. Crystal will not only be known as the first priestess, but conversely be known as the tradition's first shaman grand oracle and teacher of this First Nation. Be known as the tradition's loving, guiding hand. Conversely, where Don brought strength, you brought beauty. Not that you didn't bring beauty. <laughs> First Priestess Regent Tracy Logan Wood, you have brought such liveliness, complete different perceptions that I never even considered all of my life. And many times I walk away from you scratching my head and I think, this is good, this is good. Lady uh, uh, Tracy Logan Wood has also been very hard at work with working with the ancestors and been working with the ancestors for the last two years. And you'll see, and we've already seen within these last few days, that floration, that culmination of that work. And when Lady Tracy presents her uh, presentation today, you will be blown away. <coughs> And she will be forever known as, as keeping all the names of the family and what everyone has done on our lips for hundreds of years from now. The First Nation tribes would also teach in such a way that they would leave opportunity along the path of, of a person's journey. And it was up to that person to notice that opportunity or not, or notice the opportunity and choose to walk past or choose to pick it up and explore. That's what this tradition brings. And with that, that main core philosophy of this tradition comes from Gloria. Because Gloria would teach Crystal in that manner that she would lay a book upon a table in hopes that she would pick it up and read it in her own time and her own way. And that's just you know, part of how Gloria would, would uh, handle 
her teaching of her own daughter. Lady Virginia Smith Bitterwind. Lord Lewis once said that Lady Bitterwind brought the study of nature as a very crucial method of learning. Now this is paraphrasing the way I remembered it. But Lady Bitterwind said once, you can learn everything through nature. Everything through nature. Valuable to this tradition, this woman, she enjoyed being the devil's advocate digging down to the root of all things, then made sure to verify and then to confirm of her findings, which are very excellent traits if you think about it in her capacity. And I'm sure she still utilizes those wonderful gifts as she moves into her next venture. And she also would deeply explore all types of philosophy in all types of forms. She was, uh, it was just endless, her curiosity to learn more about many types of philosophies. Now Frank, he was a historian, so in a sense Tracy is, Lady Tracy is uh, in somewhat picking up where Frank left off. A uh, very lovely man, and so that's you know part of that. Edward Hubbard brought a laser-like focus on the importance of pagan education, as well as community development. Do you think he succeeded? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Ed once said, in seeking to provide structure to the awakening of the soul, that is spreading like wildfire across civilization, Carillians have chosen progress over perfection. We have chosen what works, replace what doesn't, and when we don't know, we experiment in order to find ways to share knowledge. Each of these insightful individuals each of these individuals showed up with a different perspective, different gifts that only they could deliver to this lovely tradition. All generous in their own right, all valuable, delivering the notion that there is a tradition that if you are open, pure-hearted, and desire to harm none, everything is open to you and for you. We already proved that Carillianism shall remain not only in the land of the transitioned, but also in the land of the living. So this is what we are, according to Stephanie Neal. <laughs> we are connection. Carillianism has embraced the notion that humans can see pre-existing connections to all creatures all cultures, realizing part of the connection is keeping abreast and attuned to all positive living things, always evolving, always moving forward. Yes, we recognize that we have trials and differences from time to time, but we choose, deliberately choose, to move forward and focus 90% of our time to the positive, to the moving, to the evolving, to moving forward. Because we believe we are already connected, then we realize we are already divine. We are learning how to walk inside deity by allowing all things to sing. We are already for the next evolutionary leap. The secondary primary precept this tradition offers. So when the days become darker, we will be able to stand in the great truth and help others see what we see in each other. As world walkers, we quietly work behind the scenes on the astral planes. We, we travel every place, everywhere, every time. 
learning many things as we are helping others, we are also learning things from them. And we work on many occasions on the newly transitioned as well. And it humbles us to know we have given this great privilege. And this great privilege was passed on through many generations and it landed in our laps to Lady Crystal High Corral. The third precept is purity of peace. And three nights ago, I received this from Caroline. So I made sure I, uh, the way I am, I sat at the computer and I typed it out. Doesn't sound very spiritual, but it sounds practical, and what are you going to do? As a whole, as a whole and healthy tradition, we willingly enter our radiant, peaceful fountain. All living things have the option to move over to the spirit world. It is always our decision how long we stay on this side or that side, be it our contract. It is us whom have chosen to enter this side of this veil via our own goddess spark that resides in each and every one of us. What we dream is not the real earth. What we fantasize is not the real earth. This is our dream that we desire to explore. The universe always obliges our desires inside our dreams while waiting for us to step outside of this dream. The goddess is dreaming us and has given us every psychic and creation power she possesses. She then allows us to experiment through our dream and dreams. When difficulties touch us, it is more beneficial to ignore the two twins, time and space, because they are only time posts or road posts. Though they are important to keep us on track, we should use time and space not as as something that locks us in, but we should utilize it as a tool to benefit, not hinder our story. Instead, pay attention to the radiant cosmic eternal and external eternity, sometimes called the matrix, sometimes called the wires by Seth. Though helpful, full consciousness is not reached solely through remaining in balance or living different lives or moving through each life seasons, sometimes imbalance is good, a good moving forward mechanism. Returning imbalance to balance, imbalance to balance. What brings us to full consciousness is, and recognizing full consciousness is already with us, has always been with us, and will always remain with us. It only takes one second, one spark, one flash to see our reality, our life, our true life. Now lean against that dream that we dream now and see what happens. See that in fact it gives. Treasures like these, these tiny eternal moments of reality this is more important than plans and suffering and dogma and trials. The light of the internal breaks through every darkness and helps us wake up to this gated dream. This light unlatches the gates and causes one to see outside this dream. The earth is just a speck of dust. A small dream dreaming inside a single source. Goddess, God says, I am with you always, no matter if you are happy or unhappy. I never disrupt what you want to happen. I only assist if asked with sincerity. From a pure heart and releasing pride over all other tribes plants, animals, cultures. To see our full humanness, it is to set aside our dream personality as if it was an invisible dream robe. Then we pick it up again and again, wearing it, maneuvering it through many lives, yet know 
It is only a dream world. It is not our full humanness. We now know it is not our being or even our essence, only a garment we wear for a short time. Do not diminish any world, any individual, or experience. For every world and every individual is mutable and is capable of changing into purity of peace. This says Caroline. Now the Caroline nation is made of Mexicans, Moroccans, Africans, North Americans, South Americans, British, the Swiss, and we can go on and on all day, and it's beautiful. And with many others that belong, unfolding just like in unison, together in peace, like the unfolding white Cherokee rose. As we manifest this cosmic work through our goddesses and our gods, we steadfastly remove abstractions, uncovering one world filled with one fully human race. This race has been preparing for many immense changes, and we are ready to release all abstractions now. As her light shines, brighter, greed falls away, replaced with generosity. As her light shines brighter, war ceases, replaced with compassion and the spirit of compromise. As his light shines brighter, selfishness and narcissism wanes, replaced with genuine concern for all living things. As her light shines brighter, we are made ready to take this next evolutionary leap. And as our spiritual understanding waxes, one nation under one sky and one deity, to the first priests and priestesses and first elders of the past, present, and future, it is self-evident. This is the firm foundation upon which we Karelians stand and these fully humans I have cited shall never be forgotten. Thank you.